SLA updates in Zendesk. Zendesk is updating the platform in order to make you more productive. So what did they do to the SLAs? Well, they added the measurement in seconds as well. There's a bit of a backstory. In the past, Zendesk used to have service level agreements only catering to hours and minutes. Well, now they've introduced seconds as well. This in order to keep up with the times of adding live channels. I feel I need to tell you what service level agreements are or SLAs. Service level agreements is your commitment to your customer that you will either reply to them within a certain time Time, or you will fix their issue within another certain amount of time. So essentially, it's keeping you accountable to be a good boy. Who's a good boy? <laughs> Who's respecting the customer and delivering what they say they are? You are. And by the way, I do have a strawberry here and I can't keep up. I have to eat it. All right, introducing some ASMR in order for you to maybe find these videos more interesting. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen now. We're going to go and configure one of these SLAs from start to finish, and we're going to test it out. So let's go. The four dots here, I'm going to go to Admin Center, then I will go to Objects and Rules, and I will scroll down to Service Level Agreements. I already have some. I have regular SLAs, and then I have group SLAs. And this smells like another video. <laughs> All right, so let's just create an SLA from scratch, create policy. Let's Let's call this one testing out the new SLA. Description, I don't need one because I've given it such a good name. Okay, define the scope of some of these conditions. Let's just say I want to look for the brand. The brand of this ticket is what assigns this SLA. Operator is, and I'm going to look for Roca work. So this is my brand. I can add additional conditions, especially for different processes in the business. I am not going to for this example, but how you you can think about this is think about what you're selling. Are you selling a product? Are you selling a service? Is one product more expensive than the other? Well, it means that maybe it's a little bit more urgent. So you can create a condition and say, if product is X, then SLA one applies. If product B is selected, then SLA two applies because that's not as urgent. Or we have a different commitment to the customer. All right, so moving on, I'm going to go next. So Zendesk has finally made this into neatly tightly grouped of reply metrics, update metrics, and resolution metrics. So reply metrics, I only have two here. First reply and next reply makes it so much easier to grasp and understand because if you go back to some of my videos, this is how I usually explained it. <laughs> These are SLAs. You should think about them as reply times and then resolution times. And in the middle, update metrics if you want to go really granular. Okay, and then there's uh, resolution metrics, which is request to wait time, agent work time, total resolution time. My my best practice advice here is to use the first reply time from the reply metrics and the resolution time, which is total resolution time. Start out with these two. And once you start getting a grasp and your agents get used to it, start adding more to it. Get more granular if you want to. In this example, I'm just going to create a reply metric because we just want to see how this looks like. All right, to the doom, first reply time. I have to choose my SLA according to my priority. No SLA will be applied unless there is a priority added to a ticket. As a best practice, I recommend creating a trigger that automatically assigns a normal priority to any incoming ticket. Your agent can decide from there that maybe it's a little bit urgent so they bump up the priority of the ticket or you have business rules depending on different conditions like if it's product B then oh my god it's a storm let's bump up the priority and you do that with a trigger or a macro or an automation I don't know whatever fits your shoe all right for urgent let's just do minutes and seconds let's do 15 minutes and then um, 40 seconds just for the heck of it high priority let's do 20 minutes 20 seconds then let's do normal priority by the way i have the best practice and i add a normal priority to my ticket as soon as they come in so i'm just going to put like a two minutes and i don't know 30 seconds and then low priority i'll just put i don't know seven minutes 45 seconds all right so adds this one save policy and what i'm going to do is very important these function from top to bottom so i'm going to edit the order and i'm going to put this new sl created at the very top because I want this one to apply first. All right, so let's test this bad boy via email. So let's do info at Roca. By the way, if you want to reach out, this is the email to use. Put a subject testing 
testing the new SLA. Is this the shiznit or not? All right, just going to send this up. Now I'm going to go to my support and I'm going to go to unassigned tickets. I'm going to refresh my screen and here it is. This ticket that just came in. I have two minutes for it. it came just a few seconds ago. It's my email. It's from the requester, Bernie. And this is my subject line. And this is the SLA, two minutes. Now this new type of SLA is applying to live channels. This is why Zendesk updated the platform to cater to minutes and seconds because it needs to take into account live channels like chat, messaging, etc. And uh, you know, you have to keep up with the times and add seconds. So I'm going to go to events. I'm going to ignore everything else and I'm just going to look at SLA post policy, testing new SLA. So this got applied immediately once it came in because the brand was good. Look, testing new SLA, two minutes and 30 seconds. So there you go. It's still running. While we were chatting, look, it's going up. It's almost broken. I have one more minute. Oh my God, anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. All right, for some conclusions, there you have the new SLA. There are a bunch of tutorials on how to best use this. It depends on use case to use case. I'm going to share in the description of this video two very useful links. One is going to be how to use SLAs for different time zones. And this is very useful in this case where you have teams working all over the world and to cater to your products that you sell or services and of course different teams. And another article on how to define SLA policies if this video wasn't sufficient. I hope you liked this video. Please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel to help the algorithm bring this to more people. I'd be very grateful and thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.